Okay, as we continue with section 7.2, let me show you a problem that's a little bit easier than the last few we've done. When you see a square root, you know that the index is a 2. Our goal is to make this exponent divisible by 2. That's going to resolve it. Watch this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up into a product. 5 is not divisible by 2, but you ask yourself this question. Start counting backwards from 5. 5, 4. Is 4 divisible by 2? Yes. x to the 4th is going to go in this position, and we would have x to the 1st here. Notice that x to the 4th times x to the 1st is just another way of writing x to the 5th. But watch what happens. Now, 4 divided by 2, this whole part becomes x squared. And this part stays under the radical. It's junk. It doesn't, it doesn't come out. Okay? Let's play with another one. Always look at the index. This is a 3. Is 7 divisible by 3? No. So we need to break this up using the product rule. Now watch something very important. If the index is a 3, when I break it up, it's also a 3. Start counting backwards. 7, 6. Is 6 divisible by 3? Yes. x to the 6th, and this would have to be x to the 1st, because x to the 6th times x to the 1st is x to the 7th. And then look what happens. Let's do the front part. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so that becomes x squared, and there's nothing to do to the back part, so it stays under the radical. And it's also very important to put the cube root of x. If you don't put that index, someone's going to think it's a square root, and it's not. It's a cube root, right? Okay. Let's look here. The square root of 25x to the 6th, y to the 40th. Guess what? <clears throat> Everything here is cool. This problem is easy. And here's why. 25 is a perfect square, because the square root of 25 is 5. And this is already divisible by 2, and this is already divisible by 2. So there's no work here. The square root of 25 is 5. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That is the exponent on the x. 20 divided by, I mean, rather, sorry, 40 divided by 2 is 20. So 20 is the exponent on the y. No more radical. My answer is 5x cubed y to the 20th. Now, this last one. Okay, this one's not as easy as this one. And the reason, 12 is not a perfect square, and 5 is not divisible by 2. So what we have to do here is a little bit of splitting up, okay? 12, well, let's list our perfect squares, okay? Our perfect squares, because this is a number, so we need to know our perfect squares. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and so on, right? Okay, 4 is a perfect square that goes beautifully into 12. 4 is a perfect square, 3 is not. So see how I broke 12 up? 4 and 3. I call this front house the good house because it has my perfect squares, and this is my junk house. Now, when it comes to a to the fifth, we don't look over here, we just look at divisibility. Is 5 divisible by 2? No. Let's start counting backwards. Is 4? Yes. a to the fourth goes in the good house, a goes in the junk house. Is 2 divisible by 2? Yes. So that means b squared goes in the good house. So what I've done is I've broken this into the good house and the junk house. The junk house 
is junk because it stays under the radical. Look what happens in the front. The square root of 4 is 2. And then with exponents, look what we do. 4 divided by 2 is 2. That leaves me with a squared. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And b to the first power is b. So my final answer is 2a squared b times the square root of 3a. Okay? So the numbers, the numbers are going to use my perfect squares or cubes or whatever, and all you do with the exponents is make sure that they can be divided by the index.